Hey guys, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. My name is Nick, and today we're going to be continuing the sci-fi tile set. We'll be building some airlock doors. Now, nothing new. This is strictly inspired by DM Scotty in his video on uh, airlock doors and the sci-fi tile set that he does. I use chipboard, so the only difference here is whatever material you got, go ahead and build it. Now, hope you guys enjoy Cool. So now the first thing I did was cut quarter inch strips. Now I went ahead and made a whole bunch just so that I had pieces to make doors later. But for every door you're going to need four. Alright, the next thing I did, I measured up line to line, every quarter of inch again. If you're feeling really confident, you can skip the line and go for the straight cut. But for me, I measured twice, cut once. Now, drawing them lines adds some time, but I'm alright. Alright, so what I started doing here was started measuring now one and a half segments of these quarter inch strips. Now, these are going to be my horizontal bars. So what I'm doing here is I'm measuring out exactly how many I'm going to need and I forgot how many I intended to make. I think I intended to make 10 to 12 doors. So this is how many horizontal bars that I'm going to need. I think each strip produced like three horizontals. I think I got like 40 bars out of it. So yeah, that would answer my question. 10 airlock doors. All right, so it was right here that I had a hold up moment and I was like, hold up. Now, I knew that as I continued cutting that I was gonna have a bunch of different size pieces in piles and I was gonna have a nice little way to free up mental space to sort it all. So I decided to start writing now uh, before I cut up individual pieces. And you can see me just write straight on the panel. I wrote an H for horizontal. That's just my, my quirkness. So yeah, all right, so let's get back to the cuts. Alright, so I want to point out real quick that as I started getting down to the little bits, I switched to the scissors because it made it easier and it made it safer, you know? I don't want to leave with nine digits when I started with ten digits in my craft, you know what I mean? I don't want to go through configuration, a new configuration, a little bit of transmutation, and then have to stop my inspiration to get some um, medical evaluation or because I was spacing. All right, all right, enough of that. But right here, I'm making eighth of an inch strips so that I could place them in between my vertical bars. And this is gonna act as a channel for the airlock door itself. And now here, I'm gonna start cutting up some squares. And they're gonna be three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. And then once I got that, I'm gonna cut them in half and make them triangles. And that's gonna act as connectors to tie the whole piece together create that channel and along with the support beams I call them which I'm gonna show in a minute and that's it here I'm just breaking down the final squares again three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch and using the scissors to do that and then we're ready for assembly so it's gonna be two frames for every one door and one of the frames is gonna have that eighth of an inch strip to act as a buffer
Now, I just want to point out that the only reason I used the white PVA glue was because I really didn't want to feel as rushed as this movie magic that's going on right now. But you could use any type of glue really that you want. I would say that to get to a point where if you want to use hot glue, then just be real careful with it and you're going to have to really put fine dabs uh, to do it, but it's doable and it, it's easy. Just make sure it doesn't ooze out the sides because then it's going to interrupt the channel for the door. All right, um, so this is a little out of sequence, but what I did before full assembly was attach that eighth inch strip to a quarter inch strip and I just made a bunch of those channels. Now, you're gonna need two for each door that you make so that it creates that buffer so that you can slide the, the door through it and we'll see that later. All right, now back in sequence. So here, I'm just making those side supports. I was looking at the frame after assembly and I said, you know what, I wanted to add some depth to it and I just went ahead and whipped out the, the big tools to do that just for efficiency. And then the dimensions I went with, they're going to be two and a half inches tall. It's going to be a half inch in width. And then it's going to be a quarter inch in depth. Alright, so then I just went ahead and attached those two and I used the mat to kind of do my best to kind of center it and then the PVA glue just allowed me to work without being rushed again it's the only reason I chose it alright and then here the final step was to make a sort of floor so there's no gap and I just took eighth of an inch thick XPS and I just filled in the gap using the mat to measure and the door itself to measure really if you don't have XPS or you're using foam core or something you can actually just attach it and then kind of turn it sideways and trim it off All right, so now let's make those doors. Now the doors are gonna have a little um, overhang off the top. So instead of making it two and a half inches, I made it two and three quarters of an inch tall. And I kind of went for a one and three sixteenth. I didn't wanna make it exactly the size of the channel so that it wasn't kind of squeezing in there. Made it so that it kind of flowed in and out real nice and it didn't um, leave any openings so that it still was covered by all of the framing. Right here, I went ahead and just started measuring some off cuts that I made. If one was just a little bit um, over, then the rest of them kind of measured it up against it and just went ahead and trimmed it off. I like, for this trim, I like the Ulfa knife because it gave a nice clean cut um, instead of the um, scissors that would kind of bend it. All right, so one of the final, final things I did before paint was to create some type of base. Now I was debating in my head which type of base I really wanted to go with. In the end, I chose some type of magnetization for it and I decided to put it on now uh, in preparation for the future because I also needed some type of stop for the, for the door to slide in and out so it doesn't protrude all the way through. Also, the reason I chose super glue for this application was I needed something a little more durable because I knew that the magnet, as I'm attaching it and unattaching it to the magnet, uh, it's going to have that pull to it. All right, so this thing I'm painting is I'm going to use it for the keypad of the doors. 
Now, for the blue, I want to put it on against the white. And I wanted to do a green. It didn't come out too well, so I'm not even really sure the blue. But how I made these was I just took a little piece of granny grating, um, whatever scraps I had, against a scrap of chipboard. I just glued it together, and then I covered the whole thing with glue. And the reason for this is so that when I went to paint it, it took the paint better than if I would try to apply it straight to the granny grating. And now it's time to base. So for any of the white doors that I was gonna build uh, to match my white tiles, I based in gray. And then for the gunmetal doors to match my gunmetal tiles, I went ahead and based them in onyx. It's a metallic black. And the only reason I did that is because I couldn't find my black. Alright, so after that montage, one thing I couldn't find the footage for is that on these white doors, I did the same thing as the tiles. I followed up that white with a pearlescent. And the pearlescent again is just a little translucent, so I kind of gave it an extra coat or two. Now here, I'm using that nickel just to match my tile set, and I'm going to make those trims the same exact way. You know, this is where you get a little fancy, you get a little creative. Alright, so what I'm doing here is I'm taking that title blue little granny grating that I made earlier and I'm just trimming off those nubs there so that I get the edge or the edge is a solid um, column of granny grating. And this is just to represent or to make it look like a frame basically for the keypad. Now I really want to emphasize the importance of safety here. You can see that I'm cutting really close and really fine details here. Um, keep in mind too that this is all movie magic, you know, I'm moving a little faster, a little fast forward action here. But in reality, you know, I'm taking my time, taking my, my patience and just really making sure that I have a grip on everything before I'm really going for the deep cuts and, and just be safe with that, you know. Alright guys, so to cap it off, here's a little setup here, gonna do the crates next video, 
And this is a little snapshot of the in-game session. And actually, I think I'm going to do a video talking about it. All right, everyone. And that concludes it. Again, thank you for watching. Truly humbled every time you're spending your time with me. Consider hitting that like button. It just lets YouTube know that I'm all right. Consider sharing it. I think that's the most important thing, man. I like to share with more people and engage with more people. Consider subscribing. Hit my face for that. And videos coming out every 10, 20, 30. And if you want to see those videos on the tile set, they're on the left-hand side. Got both of them. And again, truly humbled every time. Thank you for watching.